Okay. So, how we'll go about this session is that we'll recite, the, we'll read the first letter and Ustaz will elaborate on the letter. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear Rasulullah, dear Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, I ask Allah to send lots of peace and blessings upon you and to raise you in ranks. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, how much my heart yearns to see you, to be close to you in the akhirah. I pray that not just me, but the entire Muslim ummah is given the blessing to be with you in the hereafter. I pray that we get jannah in the hereafter just so we could see you and be very close to you. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam talking about having faith today the man having the greatest faith is you you spend nights and nights in prayer you continue to have sabr and trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even when people rejected you and Islam and despite the challenges you faced in life Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam you have gone through so much pain and rejection yet you never gave up i think about how broken you were when the people of Taif threw rocks and you and mocked you when you were bleeding and hurt yet you did not think any harm of them that brings me to tears you are truly great ya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam you are truly the beloved and how much we yearn to be like you looking at myself today i say alhamdulillah for where i am today and how much i have changed over the past 5 years when i started praying at the beginning stages it was just a routine for me I did not understand the purpose of it and I was not concentrating. I fasted thinking it was good a good way to stay in shape. Simply put my iman was very very low. I'm not saying that my iman is very is high now but I am so thankful to Allah for he has changed me. He has made me understand the purpose of life. He has made me seek the knowledge of Islam. I think to myself how we are running in this world to learn about matters pertaining to this dunya for how come we have no time to learn about our own religion this very question made me learn about islam to really understand the quran and apply it in my life i am so thankful to allah for he has guided me through and protected me from haram i understand now that we were not created to please this society but we are created to please allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the meaning of life and if i were, we and if we understand that then life would be so much happier Life is so not all is also not always about getting what we want but rather it is about accepting what we get. Sometimes I think that is true. If we solely trust Allah alone with our life, why would it be difficult? Including the six pillars of Islam, to me having faith means trusting Allah with everything and constantly working towards pleasing him. We pray, we know Allah is watching and he is listening. When we have a hardship, we know that Allah is going to ease it for us. When we lose something for someone we know Allah would give us something better. When we are given something we are thankful to Allah as he planned it for us. When we worry too much about the future we say my rob has the perfect plan for my future and thereafter we continue with life. When we are in time of need where we are in a time of need we ask Allah knowing that he will help us. Subhanallah. This is having faith. Believing in him and knowing he is always there for us. We have put we have to put in the effort to work on our iman. We do we do this because we are giving assurance to ourselves and our hearts. I believe that someone whose heart and thoughts are filled with the remembrance of Allah will find happiness and peace. I am not perfect and in all in fact all of us here are struggling today. But what I do know is Allah is going to help me. My faith was very low back then but today it is better. I'm going to continue to please Allah and inshallah my iman will get better. Allah does not just want our words, rather he sees the actions too. We must set the intention right before we do something. At the end, the question is always am I doing this for Allah? I strive to be that muslimah who does good deeds in secret that even the left hand is unaware of what the right is giving. I strive to be that muslimah who Allah is pleased with. I'm thankful to Allah for where I am today. I pray that Allah would guide the ummah especially the youth today. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I pray to be close to you in the hereafter. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Grateful Muslimah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah alladhi hadana lihadha wa man kunna linahtadiya lawla an hadanallah. 
wa salatu wa salam ala sayyidina wa mawlana Muhammadin afdhalu salata wa taslim wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathira subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma 'allamtana innaka antal alimul hakim fa rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul 'uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli amma ba'du alhamdulillah praises to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which we are gathered in a blessed majlis. Firstly, before I start, can anyone or everyone hear me? Can? The last one. Can? Can hear? Clear? Not clear? Fucking my iPad. Not clear? Gujo. Is the voice clear now? The last person behind. Can hear? Gujo. Before we start, I need to know who wrote this letter. <laughs> because it's so long. And it's very difficult to answer too. But inshallah, I will try. Right? If you look into the, un- into the question, I ask Allah to say, uh, 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 <laughs> It was that long. Uh, uh, he wants to see Rasulullah. Okay, the first part, paragraph, Muqaddimah, the start is, He wants to see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa Right? So, do you all want to see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? I don't hear a yes. You know when Justin Bieber says, who wants to be on a stage? <laughs> and you give that answer, he says, forget it. You know? If you say, yeah, then maybe he says, okay, then I just, just choose some of you here and the one back there. <laughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa, alayhi wa sallam was a special man. Uh, of course, he was created different from us. He was given the strength of 40 men. 40 men, not 40 weak and as talking men, but 40 strong who's willing to sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was so special that, you know, when you shake hands with him, you know, after prayers, when you shake hands with him, the sweet smell of perfume lasts in your hand for a week. You know, if you shake my hand and it smells good, it lasts a night because that's how strong my perfume is. Just one night. But from his hand alone, it will last a week. That shows that he was from a special creature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. Once there was this lady who said that, Ya Rasulullah, I have this problem. We can't afford, you know, my, my daughter is getting married and we can't afford to buy perfume. And I said, is there anything that, you know, you can give perfume from? And you know what he gave? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave his perspire. He sweat. Put it in the bottle just like how... They grind the oat, you know, the oat that they grind and make it into an oil. That's how they keep Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sweat. And they use it for? For the walima. You know, for us, after the running four click, after that you sweat, then you put on the bottle. How does it smell? How does it smell? It's worse than the shoe, right? Uh. And of course, recently you've seen the showcase of the sandals of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I visited when uh, in Malaysia too. That I was looking towards the the the, the, the artifacts and so forth. A, a man came over and said, "Say, Haji, you try smelling the sandals of Rasulullah say, because there's a small hole where you can actually smell, right? In the end, right? So I said, okay, I'll try and smell. And it has this very strong smell that if you know, if you go, you go Umrah." That you, you're close to the Multazam, that this smell called, uh, what's it smell? Misik, Misik, yeah. It has the Misik smell. Have you, have you smelled Misik before? Yeah? No, right? Okay, so you, you try, I, I tried uh, smelling from that showcase and really have that fragrance. And that sandal is over a thousand years. Right? It has a smell of, fragrance of Misik. You try going out and see the shoes and the sandals. You see what happened. 
If you get headache for a day, that shows the difference. And that's just a day. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sandals was there over a thousand years. So it shows that Rasulullah is a different creature altogether. And once he came back from a battle, lady came over and said, Where is Rasulullah? Where is Rasulullah? Where is Rasulullah? He said, Why are you concerned about Rasulullah? Why aren't you concerned about your husband who is fighting in a battle? Your children, sons who are fighting in a battle? He said, If my, if my husband passed away, I can remarry. No issue, right? If I lose my children, I can always have more children, right? But if Rasulullah passed away today, is there a substitute? No substitute. So that was the love of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam back then, right? So same here. Those who yearn to see Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam will get the opportunity to see him in this world as well in the hereafter. But there are those who can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait for the hereafter. Who want to die? I want to see him first here in this world. So there are certain ways of uh, ulama, ulama scholars taught us of how to see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam either in a dream or in a state of wakeful. Right? Uh, firstly, these ulama, ulama scholars advise us to increase the salutations to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam by increasing the salutations to Prophet Muhammad, you are actually uh, you are actually increasing the love for him. And when you love someone, you can't sleep because you keep you keep thinking about it. Same goes when you have exams coming up, right? When you screw up the previous semester, you know. So just before the exam, will I screw up again? You can't sleep, right? You can't sleep, correct? Same goes when we were younger. When your parents promise you, if you pass, I'm going to buy you a new mountain bike. Right? New mountain bike. So all the way while waiting for the results, you can't sleep. Why? You were waiting and dreaming about mountain bike. Right? Mountain bike. At times you can't sleep, you think mountain bike, mountain bike. You were actually riding it at East Coast also. <laughs> before getting it. So the same goes here. By increasing of the salutations of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam, there comes a yearning that you will always have a picture of him, but you have not seen him. So anything that characterize characterize him, right? You put inside your photogenic memory. For example, the green dome. Right, green green dome actually is a characterize of his tomb, right? His moss. Number we, his hair, his sandal, all the things that belong to him, right? You put it in your, in your mind, and that's why it automatically comes about. Uh, so it's quite as simple as that, because currently what we have is two forty-five a.m. No two forty-five, Champions League. Ah, uh, I wake up two thirty, two thirty, two thirty. So you will actually. <laughs> Thinking about the result score, right? Zero zero, right? Last week, zero zero, yeah, zero zero. It's okay. It's a draw. It's a good draw. Although Liverpool deserve to win, <coughs> because Allah says in the Quran, "Don't follow the footsteps of the devils. Don't follow the footsteps of the devils. They are your enemies. So follow Liverpool." I follow in Quran. You need to practice the Quran and follow what's in the book, right? Uh, there are few salutations that you can recite that helps you to 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 see Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Firstly, is the salutations of Imam Abu Wahab Shaarani radhiyallahu an. He was a big scholar of Hazar over six to seven hundred years back, and he says that those who recite this lawan, Allah mustali ala roh sidilah Muhammad fil arwah. Wa ala jasadihi fi al-jasad Wa ala kabri fi al-kubur Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim That he recites 70 times during the day And 70 times before he sleeps That he isn't for him To see the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam In his dream Yeah, right? 70 times during the day 70 times at night Right? The second salutations that you can recite 
Oh, Ustaz, I can memorize. Very simple. Go to Ustaz Google. Then you say, uh, Salawat Ruh, I think. You try now. If there is, they will just capture that, that salutations from a book, actually. Allahumma salli ala Ruh Sayyidina Muhammad fil arwah wa ala jasadihi fil ajasad wa ala qabri fil kubur wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sakin. The second salutation is the salutation of Imam al Qutub Al Habib Ali bin Muhammad bin Nusin Al Habshi. They call it the salutation of Miftah. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi Sayyidina Muhammad Miftah bah wa rahmatillah ada damai fil ilmillah salatan wa salaman daimaini bidawa min mulkillah 300 times right so you can try the first one you can try the second one minimum 300 300 times right so that's about salutations right same goes if you go to ustad google you said salawat miftah then it comes up salawat mif miftah Right, you can try now, and then you can double check with me after the after the talk whether it's the correct salutations or not. Right. The third one you can try is to recite parts of Burda. Uh, but the Burda one is the one with the Hamazia. That when you're about to sleep, you recite Laitahu Khasani Biroyati Wajin Zala Ankuli Man Ra'au Shagao. You recite. 300 times. Uh, this is for Abur, Burda. As you know, I think Ustaz Mohsin was mentioning about how Imam Sharafuddin Burda dream of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to get a cure. Right? I went to visit him in Iskandaria, the left city, Iskandaria. Right? He was a very famous scholar from Azatu. He was also a lover of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's how he created Bur, Burda. Another way of reciting or seeing Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is to recite surah, our favorite surah. You know our favorite surah? You don't have your own favorite surah? I tell you our favorite surah. I memorize. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Inna a'tainaka al-kawthar Fasalli li rabbika wanhar Inna shani'aka huwa al-abtar Surakallah al-Nabi Eh, our favorite surah <laughs> When you're in a hurry, this is the last surah that you recite And then my favorite also Qul Allahu Akbar Allahu Samad Right To recite it Every Friday, uh, 121 times. 121 times. Inna a'tayna kal kawthar that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the well of kawthar to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. In fact, there was a story, maybe later, <laughs> regarding Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? So there are a few uh, salutations that you can follow, inshaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with seeing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in your dreams. The start of wanting to see him is the yearning part. The yearning part. Right? If there's no yearning, it's very difficult. You know, uh, beforehand, maybe during your, your, your GC days, you really wanted to go NUS. Right? You want to go NUH, right? You want to go NUS. Right? So from then on, you already prepare yourself. The yearning. And when you talk about yearning, there's a way to say sacrifice, correct? There's a lot of sacrifice involved, right? Especially during their exams and it happens to be the Champions League of semi-final part, you know? So it's like watching there, watching there, watching there. It was quite difficult, but there was a struggle. But there's a yearning involved, right? right. So that's regarding of yearning of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then secondly, it's always to keep that salutation in istiqamah. Uh, so you try one week, don't have leh, don't have leh, right? Then after one month, don't have leh. Uh, it's just testing. It's just test, testing. Because if you feel the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he's always with us, right? He's always with us. What's the evidence? The evidence that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions that when you are about to enter your house, 
when you're about to enter your house, right, and there's no one at home, or if there's someone at home, to give salam and salutations to him, right? You recite, Assalamu alaikum ayyuhan nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa ala ibadillahi salihin. Which means that you give the salutations to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to your house in Bedok Reservoir. But the Rasulullah is in Medina. So what he meant here is that he's everywhere. He's even in the presence with us. That Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions that every gathering where there's a remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's always angels around us. Right? That's why you feel cold, right? The coldness. Because angels were created from light. And that's why you feel cold. Do you feel cold? Do you feel cold? Well, if you feel cold here, it's because of the aircon. <laughs> right? The next question is, do you see angels around us? Do you see angels? Huh? But do you believe they are angels? Right? There are two behind you. Rakit eh? Ajit. Two. But the one that comes in a gathering of remembrance of Allah is about 70,000 angels. You want to fill up National Stadium? 15,000 waiting outside. Not enough. Because they need 70,000 seats. Right? So do you believe in it? That's where faith comes about, right? That's the faith. So when you talk about faith now, we talk about we're going to faith now. When you talk about faith, you must have this belief. Correct? You must have this belief. Do you believe in Singapore education system? <laughs> Why else mine? Do you believe? That means do you have faith? Because when you have faith, you need to believe. Right. If you don't have, if you don't believe, there's no faith. I mean, it works together, right? So the lady here, if really a lady, it could be anyone, right? She was talking about faith regarding her faith today. So now I would like to ask, and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam too asked his companions, say. How is your faith today? So we're not talking about a lady, we're talking generally. How is our faith today? On a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you give your, your faith is? We start from the back row, then to the front? Or we start from the front to the back? Or we start from the side? How much do you think is your, your, your faith based on a scale of 0 to 10. So, although I'm talking to myself or talking to the angel, <laughs> how strong is the faith right now? You need to diagnose the illness so that you can give the proper cure. Correct? We're in the faculty of medicine anyway. <laughs> if you don't tell me what you're sick with, how do I give you the cure? I might just give you Panadol. And you can just buy that in 7-Eleven as well. If you want a proper cure, then you need to see the specialist. Right? So on the scale of 0 to 10, who says mine is below 5? How many? Below? Below 5? Right? Who says mine is below 5? Who says my faith is above 5? So the rest is what? More than 10, I guess. <laughs> I mean, she has reached the, the you know, Ambiya, Rasul, Prophets, Messengers. Say, who's that? 0, 5, 5, 10, what's that? I'm 12.5. <laughs> I'm much higher than that. No, it's okay. I believe my faith is also between 0 to 5. I find myself as a failure. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives us ways, right, on how to increase our faith. To him, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Firstly, firstly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, uh, 
that those who hears who hears the word of Allah Subhanahu wa taala what even sudah had alladhina idza ujilat qulubihim zadatuhum imana that those who listen the words of Allah Subhanahu wa taala his heart shake his heart shakes not just now what's his name Nazir. When Nazir was reciting Quran, do you feel anything? Huh? Do you feel anything? Or you need to look and understand at the words to feel anything? Now, I give you an experience. Right? In Jakarta, because I studied Quran in Jakarta. Right? Once, there was this pastor, a Christian pastor, as he, as he came for a conference in Jakarta. So he was on his way to the conference to give speech. Right? As you know, if you've been to Jakarta, how's the city? Macet. You know macet? Macet means jam. You will stuck in the jam. Correct? Uh, those who've been to Jakarta, they should know. And they should love it also. Right? So they're stuck in a jam along the road. Usually you will hear recitation of course. Quran and this pastor was in a was in a car. He too was listening to the Quran because he got stuck in a jam, right? So upon reaching the conference and so forth, on the way back to his hotel, his driver was a Muslim, and he asked, he "said Do you know the one who recite Quran just now?" He said, "Which one?" Because I wasn't, uh, I wasn't listening that well. Okay, tomorrow you take the same route where you brought me today so that I will tell you where actually or who uh, the person is. Okay, so the next day for the conference, he goes to the same route. And luckily the guy same, plays the same cassette. <laughs> because he got no other cassette. <laughs> it's the same cassette with the same verse. <laughs> right? So he stopped along that route and said, I want this one. I want this one. The pastor was listening to this recital of this cassette. I want this one. He said, then the guy stopped, the driver stopped, and went to the shop and said, Can I look at the cassette? He said, Yeah, you can. Who's the reciter of this Quran? Ustad Muammar Zakah. He was my teacher. He said, Okay. You got the name? He said, Yeah, okay. I got the name. So years passed by. I didn't know this, but he told me, I said, Sorry. Eventually, my teacher here, this guy, got an invitation. But it was a very difficult and it was a different invitation. Usually when you get invitation from from uh, ministers and so forth to recite. But this was a very weird invitation. Why? He was asked to recite Quran in a church. In Christ Church in New Zealand. He said, this is the first time I said. This is a very weird invitation. Uh, but okay, since I've not been to New Zealand, it's a new place. You know, you can see Orbit there, you know. Uh, all the, the movie, Lord of the Rings. So, so he went. So he went there. Right? So usually he recite half an hour. He usually recite if he's in Jakarta, half an hour. Right? Because too much, right? For the, if you're more than half an hour, people become kushuk. You know kushuk? <laughs> eh, why like that? Kushuk, kushuk, kushuk. <laughs> kushuk until the tongue come out. Yeah, they want more kushuk. Right? So, but since these guys is being sponsored to fly all the way to New Zealand, I should recite more. Okay, so he tried the he tried market. So they must he tried just reciting for half an hour. Sadaqallahu Alabim. And you know what? The pastor who invited him stand and said, Don't stop. Continue. And he was shaking. Hey, this time, first time uh, this guy asked me to recite more. He was reciting in a church. And this guy stand up and say, I paid you more than that. It's half an hour, maybe not enough. <laughs> I think that was what he meant, but he said, continue reciting. And you know how long he recited for another? An hour. And he said, it was a beautiful recitation. And they all clapped. He said, it was the first time I get that kind of reception in a church. What I'm trying to say here is, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, that this heart, when he hears the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it shakes. Shaking meaning here, not shake like dandut, but shaking, he feels a sense of serenity, he feels a sense of 
stability. I, I guess you've seen in media social, right? There's this guy in Amsterdam that he allows people who's walk on, walking on the street to listen Fatiha, correct? You've seen before? What did, what did they say? What the heck? But, but, but usually when they, they listen, what, what did they comment it about? They said it was peaceful. They said it was application. I find a sense of helpness, right? And these people are not Muslims. These people are who? Non-Muslims. So if non-Muslims are able to actually benefit from the Quran, why aren't we, the Muslims, taking advantage of it? So how do you increase faith? Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Tadabbarun al-Qur'an Recitation of Qur'an And then look into the What you recite about The first surah Baqarah That you, you recite Alif Lam Mim Dhalikal Kitabula What does it mean? What does it mean? Yeah. <laughs> What does it mean? ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِي This book is without any doubt. Do you have doubt about the book? Do you have doubt about the book? If you have doubt, then you ask. If you doubt about something during class, correct? If you doubt about something, you will see the lecture after, after class. Now, do you have doubts about the book? Do you have doubts about the book? Oi. <laughs> Do you have doubts about the book? No, no right? No. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, He says in the Quran, وَلَنَبْلَوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوءِ وَنَقْسِمْ مِّنَ الْأَنْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُثِ وَالثَمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرُ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah says in the Quran that among my servants to show that I love them, I will test them. Huh. This is in the Quran. Bishay'i min al khawf. The first thing that Allah will test you is about fear. Now I would like to ask, what do you fear? Even the guy with the shirt, no fear, will have fear. <laughs> <laughs> what is your fear? Do you fear graduating and not getting your job? That's the fear. Do you fear when you get married, you get married to a psycho? <laughs> That's a big, that was the biggest fear. I thought he looked okay. Leh. He looked like soft. Leh. I got so hard when he was married. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of fear. Then how you overcome the fear? That will be the next question. How do you overcome that fear? You fear your models, right? You have to retake again, repeat the semester, right? You try to meet your expectation of your parents, right? So we have a lot of fear. How do you release the fear? Huh? How do you release the fear? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran فَذْكُرْنِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ وَاشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ If you remember me, I will always remember you. Remember me. Remember me. When you say remember me, it's not just remember with your heart, but remember him a lot. Scottish people say a lot, a lot, a lot. Allah says in the Quran, Ya Yuladina Amanu Kurullah Hadikran Kathira. Wasabbi huhu bukratan wa asila. He said, Oh believers, always remember me in abundance. In abundance. That's why almost every act that we do routinely, there's always a dua. Correct? Correct. When you leave your house, there's always a dua. Correct? When you wake up, also there's a dua. When you enter the toilet, there's always a du'a. After you put put, also there's a du'a. After you leave the toilet, there's a du'a. Everything is du'a is always why? Because to 
actually educate us that we can ever, ever, ever be separated from Him. Never, ever separated from Him. He wants us to be close to Him so that we will hold a rope. Habalum milallah. Habalum minannas. It is very good. Also in Arabic, you know, Arabic has the highest literature. It's more difficult than Shakespeare. Why? Why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use the word habal as relationship? Habal is the rope. Because the rope has two ends. The rope has two? Is there any rope with three ends? Is there any rope with one end? Rope must have both ends. Correct? When you talk about both ends, he already has given you that rope. Remember? Remember me. You know that song? Remember me. So just like my redak here, my shawl, it has two, two ends. Correct? It has two ends. Now, for example, you are now swimming at Mauritius. Oh, Mauritius. Oh, oh, heaven, heaven place. Heaven place. You are now in Mauritius. You are swimming. Suddenly, you got caught in a current and you are drowning. You are drowning. Right? So a lifesaver, not the body watch now. This one is. <laughs> the guy said, You need help? You need help? Right? So he threw the. Throw what? Throw what? Try the life? Life boat. Life boat. He throws to you. Correct? He has done his part. But what you need to do? Grab it. Grab car. You need to pull. If you don't pull, whose fault is this? Salaku, salakau. Salaku, salakau. My fault or your fault? Whose fault? Whose fault? Your fault. What my fault? Your fault lah. <laughs> he is throw the life saving ball to you, but you didn't pull. Whose fault is it? Huh? Your fault. You see? He asks you to remember him, you do remember him. He asks you to pull, you don't pull. See? So that's how faith is. That's why it's very important to have a very strong relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of it is to, to always recite Quran and always in remembrance of him. Right? So increase the faith is to recite Quran and also to understand what you recite. Right? Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions in the Quran about the importance of reciting surah Waqiah, for example. Waqiah is to ease your provisions, correct? To ease your provisions, right? So now, which is more important, our certificate or the provisions is given by God? Huh? Which is do you think more important? I mean, if you you apply after forty times. It was turned down. Worst come to worst, I join army only, man. Worst come to first, I just join immigration, man. Yeah, I still got three bar here, man. <laughs> but is that what you really want to do? <coughs> so which is more important? The one with the certificate? Well, actually, someone with the certificate became a president. Someone with the certificate is now in jail as well. <laughs> So which is which? It is very important to have both. Right? But one is never enough. You need both. Which means that you have already put an effort. You have pulled yourself. At the same time, you need his help. Right? You need his, his help. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, أَأَنْتُمْ تَزْرَعُونَ أَمْ نَحْنُ زَارِعُونَ The one who is actually sowing the, the seed so called is me or you. We are planting the plant. Until that it grows its fruits, who actually has the power to do that? Huh? Who? Allah. 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 So He is the one. Okay? So from then you understand why you need Him. You see, the reason why we pray is not because our parents will beat us if we don't pray. Right? When we were young, remember when we were young? So the parents ask us to pray, right? So we enter the rooms, right? But then you close the door, right? 
Then you say Allahu Akbar. Masya Allah, like Masjidil Haram, you know. Allah. Then after a few minutes, Allahu Akbar. Masuk rukuk mah. Uh, but then he was playing his computer game like that. Sami Allah, Rahman Hamida. Oh, Sami Allah. Masya Allah. First rakat finishing, you know. Allahu Akbar. Nah. Then Saturday after, not so short, lah. Five minutes actually. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. That was when we were young, correct? Remember that time? <laughs> were you the one? And during fasting, then the parents say, Man, today you fast? Fast. You see my, my lips dry what? Dry what? Yeah, dry, dry, correct. Then after that, go up it downstairs, 100 plus. <laughs> right? Or you put one inside the bag. Right? And then when you go into the room, you go to the toilet. Galak, 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 galak. Man, what you doing inside? Taking wudu. Wudu, wudu. You know, it's the sunnah to put the water in the mouth. Wudu. That was how we pray. That was how we fast back then. But now when we grow older, and through knowledge, we understand that praying is not like that. Praying is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He wants us to be closer to Him. And as a medium for us to be close to Him, is through solat. Right. That's why in my previous lecture, when was that? Six months ago? Five months ago? Right? Huh? Right? Five months ago. Five. Eight months ago. Maybe. I think after I went to Dubai. I give you a choice, option here. You know, I'm better. You know what? I give you an option. You want to pray? Or you don't want to pray? It's your choice. I thought that one compulsory what? We got choice one. <laughs> no, I give you that choice. You want to pray or not to pray is your choice. You know why you, you, you know why is a choice? I'll give you an example. Is stealing okay in our religion? Can you steal? But Friday prayers, people uh, lose their slippers. <laughs> Correct? People lose their slippers on Friday during prayers. Do they get struck by lightning? <laughs> you don't see anyone stealing sweepers Get struck by lightning That means Allah gave us options But we took the wrong options Now about prayers here You know what's about the importance of the options here That those who pray They understood why they pray You pray because You need his help You pray because You got a lot of problems And you need someone to give you the way out so you look into the problems in your life, who do you think can actually help you out? When we were younger, we have Abang Angkat. You know, you have Abang Angkat? Terangkat. Oh. You have Kakak Angkat. Right? Kakak Angkat. So when you are in problems, you always go to them. Correct? Or even your parents. Or even your siblings. But how much can they help you? you know, forever you have a problem with your model. Can you ask your parents? They might give you primary school language. But <laughs> there, are, there are limitations in them. You have a problem with the model. You were sitting. Suddenly a guy comes over. Hey bro, you're from this, uh, this faculty? Yeah. Which year? Second year, third year. This one actually is simple. Huh? Simple. Huh? I find it. This one killer subject. Come, I teach you how. Don't know from where this guy come. Who sent him? Huh? Who sent him? If you call him. Not call him meaning call, but you ask him from yourself, then he will, he will come. That's why we pray. We got to pray just to make it today. <laughs> you know who sang that? Huh? No, huh? because you were too, too young. Maybe the one over 30 will know. Right? We got to pray just to make it today. You see? So firstly, recite a lot of Quran and then tadaburan. It's very easy. You have problems in life? People go to see the, you know, the, the one with the current balls. Right? We don't do current balls. What you do, you just open the Quran, you just recite. And that verse will be talking about your life. That verse will be talking about your life and the way up to your problems. That's how special Quran is. Right? 
So, for example, you have problem relationship, relationship, right? Suddenly come up, that surah. <laughs> that surah means you know what? The ladies be waiting for you to to ask for engagement. You're so slow. You don't understand. You don't see the signs, <laughs> right? Uh, first Quran. Second remembrance, you must have a routine remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe Ustaz Musin has mentioned that you must have routinely every day the recitations of certain things in your life. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that you renew your faith by reciting La ilaha illallah. And that's why ulama says that every day you must have the recitation of La ilaha illallah. The good thing about dhikrullah that even ladies in their period, they can recite this. Because it's not Quran. It's not Quran. Right? Uh, so you must have a dhikr of La ilaha illallah. You must have recitations of Allah. You must also have recitations or salutations to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Alright? Uh, and then you have certain hizib that you can recite. Certain ratibs that you can recite. Right, you can start to recite now. I mean, now here you start from tomorrow onwards. These are supposed to help you to make you closer to Him, <coughs> as well as to increase the faith. Right? That's why Bon Jovi say, "Keep the faith." Right? Right? So once you start, there always a problem. What is the problem? Maintaining it, because you must give time to it. You know, we are all given twenty-four hours. Right? And then we sleep about 10 hours. So we have 14 hours. Yeah? Not 10 hours. How long you sleep? 5 hours only. Because I got Simon, ma. I <laughs> said, so 5 hours lah. We later holiday, 13 hours is okay. <laughs> uh, you wait only lah. You wait only lah. Right? So say we sleep about now 6 hours. Right? You have about 18 hours left. Then you cut off the 5 times prayer. Right? The express one. Kulia, a class. Kulia, a class. So there's about 3 minutes. Right? Times 5 is only 15 minutes without the ZK ZK and so forth. Just now was very long. I was struggling there. <laughs> right? It's only about our, how much time? You still got over 17 hours left. 17 hours. Right? If you really look into the time, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wal asri innal insan alafi khusri. That based on the time of asr, that we are always in loss. We are always in, in loss. Why? Because we never take our time correctly. So people say like, Oh, just now zikir so much lah. Uh, the situation is too long lah. You try to lah. Imam Shafi radiallahu an, during the time of, uh, during the time of Ramadan, he completes the recitation of Quran twice in a day. He still needs to sleep. He still needs to eat. You see, when you strive for his sake, he make it easy for you. But the criteria and they say, you must strive. Not bucap bucap. You must strive. وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَحْدِيَا لَهُمْ سُبُلَنَا That those who strive for our sake, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for you. Easy for you. That's why we pray now. That's why we recite Quran. That's why we have a lot of remembrance of Him. Because we really, really need His help. Right? Uh, so now it's no more routine thing. Now you pray for a purpose. In life, there's always a need for a purpose. Right? So if you want to ask you, when are you getting married? When? When are you getting married? Have you planned? Eh? When are you getting married? I can't don't know. Because break up already, right? That's why I don't know. If you haven't break up, next week, correct? <laughs> In our life, Rasulullah mentions that we always make this du'a. Allah ma'inna nas'aluka ridaka wa jannah wa na'udhu bika min sakhatika wa nar. That we always ask for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for jannah, paradise. And when will you enter paradise? Not now. I mean, now you only go paradise city in Perak. But you go in a hereafter. There's a long, long, long time before you enter paradise. He asks you to aim that far. So if you don't have an aim in your life, there's no motivation. Right? There's no motivation. When are you getting married? How many children you want? How many? Seven? Seven okay. Oh, seven okay lah. <laughs> <laughs> what car do you want to drive when you're age 40? When do you want to retire? Huh? 
So all this you need to plan. And to make sure everything is in is in place, is who? Him again. Alamak, always him lah. <laughs> it's always him. You see? It's always him. Right? So it's very important to always keep the, keep the faith. So it's no more routine. Allah just now says it. وَلَنَبْ لُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ خَوْفِ وَالْجُوْ Jew is hungry. Alhamdulillah settle. Just now 7 o'clock, see Allah, you eating really. So no more hungriness. Right? وَنَقْسِمْ مِنَ amwal. That you'll be tested with loss of earnings. Loss of earnings. You see, you'll be tested in there because for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need to sacrifice something. Like for example, now if you want to go hajj, it will take some portion of your fortune away. Uh, right? So you need a, <laughs> a lot of fortune. Right? If you're going in, your, in pairs, for example, you and your wife, right? currently how much is it to go hajj? It's about 13,000. 13,000. So a pair will be about 26,000. So you need to fork, fork out a portion of fortune. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see the sacrifice. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also mentions in a hadith that those who give sadaqah, right, do give sadaqah. Of course, sadaqah is sunnah. Right, if you go hajj, if you are able to afford it, then it's become compulsory. That those who give sedekah, that his wealth will increase. Bal yazdad, bal yazdad, bal yazdad. You know, we're talking about faith, yazid wa yankus. At times our faith increases, at times our faith decreases. But if you're always on your sedekah, right? you always do sedekah, that your, your wealth increases, increases, increases. So there's a faith. But most people, most people do not have that faith. I'll be first to see it because why? Every Friday you heard these announcements. You know every Friday? The mosque manager will make the announcement. Alhamdulillah, last week we collected $5,253.22. Thank you very much. But the one attending is 3500 That means this person gave 150 only. Of course, there are those who put 5 bucks, there are those who put 10 bucks, there are those who put 50 bucks. I believe many never put at all. That's why it decreases. If 3,500 can only fork out 5,222 dollars and 32 cents, bakhil. The jama is bakhil. Seriously. How much is a biryani per pack? Cheapest you can find is 5 bucks. Correct not? 5 dollars to fill up the stomach. But not five dollars to get the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If three thousand five times five is how many? Seventeen thousand five hundred. But instead we only get five thousand two hundred. Bakhil. Because they don't have belief. Alhamdulillah, I managed to see some very generous people in Singapore. Uh, this story is truth. I got it from the mosque manager of Majid Maidin. There was this very uh, rich lady who came just for a prayer. Yeah? She came maybe, I don't know what prayer was it, Zohra. So she prayed and then she found out, she found that the, 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 the carpet is a bit rough. You know, when she do the sujud prostitution, it's a bit rough on her head. You know what she do? She went to the office and said, uh, when was the last time you actually changed the, 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 the carpet? He said, oh, about eight years ago. You know, I find it rough, but it's okay. You go do a quote, then you give me the, the check, I'll pay for it. Just for one prayer. That's how generous people are can be. So we need Abu Bakar al-Siddiq, we need Osman ibn Affan, we need Abdul Rahman bin Auf in the community. Why? Because we need everyone hand in hand. Everyone need hand in hand. Because why? They have that faith. They have that faith. Right? Maybe to us it's a small thing, but to them it's a big thing. Because why? By doing sedekah, that actually increases your wealth. There's this story. Uh, of this lady, 28 years old in KL, she already had two children. She found that the income that the, the husband brings in is not enough, right? Totally not enough. So she's trying to help out by doing small things, selling cosmetics, selling things, you know, pisang goreng in the afternoon, that kind of thing. Maybe she get a few hundred so forth, right? However, she found a way <clears throat> to try to block. Yeah, yeah, blogger? Blogger. 
right? So she ate, for example, pisang goreng in some roads, very old roads. She said, this pisang goreng, although it's a certain road, tastes good, right? She just put in a blog, then there's a lot of people reading it and a lot of likes and so forth, right? Then throughout the days and the months, she find out that, why don't you put more things in that so that at least we know where you stay, where to eat and so forth. So it becomes a blogger. <laughs> right? She became a blogger, right? And then <clears throat> her income increases. However, she asks advisors. She wants advisors from people as to how to increase the businesses of a blogger. So she met this millionaire in Malaysia. And she said, my dear daughter, Soko, I don't have any strong, good advice that can help you out. But I can give you one advice that helped me to be where I am today. Never leave the car every day. If you have one ringgit, put that in the box. Because Allah doesn't look into that amount. Because Allah is rich. Allah doesn't need our money, does He? Ali need our money? You are not, you are not, you are not, you are not. It's not like our kid, you know, you give two dollars, you are not, you are not. He doesn't need our money. But we want our money to grow. We want the barakah of our wealth. She said, don't leave sadaqah every day. Because Rasulullah mentions about the importance of sadaqah, not only because it increases the wealth, it gives you long life, it gives you barakah to the wealth, that you are protected, you know. You're, you get a cure from your illness and so forth, you know. At times, you're, 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 you're holding to your wealth. Holding to wealth, holding to wealth, that kind of accident, pam. <laughs> then what happened? MRI 500. Medisave never cover. Thousands gone just like that. And it happens to Joma of mine who actually, he said, Ustad, I'm only telling you and don't tell others. So I say, okay, since your name is not known, I can tell others. <laughs> actually, in a heart, I want to slaughter a cow for korban. Cow. But I keep saying, yes or no, yes or no. He can afford it. He drives a BM. He can or not, can or not, can or not. So they said not to do. Not to do? Slaughter. He decided not. In the end, not. Then a month after the Korban period, he just go for routine checkup with Scar. Then say, hey, you're this thing, ah, already, uh, already, bekarat, apa? Rusty. You need to change this. If not, your gear can't move uh, properly and so far. At the end of the day, he gets the receipt. How much? 1,008. 1,008. Which is much more than a cow that cost thousand two. He said, if that day I slaughter a cow, I wouldn't get this crap. <laughs> huh? But now no use already. It's too late. Right? Thousand eight, thousand two, six hundred difference. The barakah is so much difference. Right? So at times we must have believed. And it comes from the, the faith. Right? Then how is it that at times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us so much strength in our life? So Sayyidina Ali Karamallah Wajah says that if Allah loves someone, Allah give him trials. Because all the while, we are depending on humankind. Correct? When we get something or we are in a problem, we always go to our parents. Right? We go to our angkats, sister angkat, brother angkat and so forth. They are Christians. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to teach Rasulullah too that when his uncle passed away, that when his wife, the supportive wife, passed away, who do you ask help from? Huh? You need to ask directly from him. So that's how he's trying to educate Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. See, are your great great grandparents still around? Great great grandparents still around? No more already. No more already. Eh? Are your grandparents still around? Still, eh? some. The next one in place who gonna leave us is who? Yeah. After our great grandparents, the next one who's going to leave us is our grandparents. After grandparents is our parents. And this is a reality check. It is not <laughs> like something that we assume. It will happen. So when are you ready? Are you ready for the call? I've received my call. When I was studying in Hadramot, on a Saturday, someone called. They call and say, I mean, Chanda. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> yeah, say what's up? Uh, my brother called. He said, My father is no more around. And I didn't see him for one and a half years because I was there. I only came back 2008. So for the next one, half, one year plus, I didn't manage to see him. He has passed away. 
I was like shocked. You know, when you see the Sinetron movie, movie, you know, drama, when you get the news, it was like, I was also in that kind of shock. I was that shocked. I was, I got fever for four days. MC one, not choking one. 38.8 one. Okay. For four days. So from then on, I've already preparing myself for big things. This means unexpected events in my life. Because we don't know what's coming to us. We just need to keep ourselves prepared. And because of that, at times, when we are not prepared, you can go siao. <laughs> Seriously, I see people go siao. I, see, I still have a friend, a Moroccan friend, who's still grieving about his mother who has passed away four years ago. Four years, the grief is still there. You so see, when you see an old lady thinking about his mother, he starts to cry. So how are we going to face that? How are we going to face that? And it will happen to everyone here, unless you pass away before them. <laughs> uh, that, will be a bad, uh, that will be a bitter grief from them. It's much worse, right? Uh, right? So let me use a long letter. I think I answered most of it. Right? We go to the next letter. Dear Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, I hope to write to you about having faith, having faith, iman, and also hope it would be a reflection for me to pause and think. Personally, I feel having faith in Allah subhanahu wa taala is just the most beautiful, priceless gift a believer can ever have. Its meaning is much deeper than having belief, and I believe having complete faith can act as a strong shield which fights all the negative energy in this world and refreshes our soul. But dear Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What does having complete faith in Islam really mean? With my extremely limited knowledge and intellectual capabilities, I struggle to find the true meaning of faith and reap the benefits of faith. Whenever I am surrounded by the lovers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever I see people shedding their tears in their prayers and supplication, whenever I listen to the beautiful qasidas, whenever I see simple acts of kindness, Whenever I see my parents, whenever I see the beautiful skies, and the nature of my heart just yearns to do much more to get closer to Him, Subhanahu wa Taala, and You, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But what is holding me back? Sometimes I just feel in a state of loss, chained down to the surface of the earth with all the competition, expectations, anxiety, material influences, worries, and just want to break free. What can I do to strengthen my faith and not let things in this world affect me? The heart out at one moment feels the enlightenment and strong motivation to seek knowledge. But the, on the other hand, when faced with even a small trial and tribulation, it worries and consistency fades. How can the cult be stabilized and instilled with strength regardless of the circumstance? I have always been greatly inspired by you, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and those who have come after you, the ulama, the awliyats, who have tasted the sweetness of Iman. The greatest hope is that every step I take in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, regardless of how small it may be, would result in strengthening of faith, inshaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show me the path of guidance towards Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and you sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on this everlasting journey of faith. And salutations and peace be upon our greatest role model, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the second question is also roughly about the same on the first question. It's just that I purposely didn't answer most of the answers on the first letter rather on the second letter. So we've not mentioned about strengthening the faith, reciting Quran and understanding it. Allah have a remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe Ustaz Mohsin have already mentioned that. That you need to have routinely everyday remembrance. The third one is you need to have someone that you can hold on to. Who are these people? They are those people who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or friends that actually can motivate you in the same manner. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayu alladhina amanu taqullah wa kunu ma'an sadiqeen. O believer, right? Steadfast in your God consciously and then you mix with the right, right people. So, at times, the environment plays a, lot, uh, uh, plays a major role. Right, so you need to find friends that can actually help you in searching or striving for the path of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. I always use it as an example. 
Like for example, if you go to a perfume shop, you know, you go to the DFS shop and then you didn't bathe this morning, it's okay. It's okay. And you didn't put any perfume, right? It's okay. Right? But you go to a perfume shop and then when you leave the shop, is there a difference? There's a lot of difference. You smell better. That's the first thing. <laughs> right? The reason being is because you are in, the, in that environment. Right? So, when you are in that environment, the environment will help you. Right? It's very difficult to read Quran in a disco. It doesn't, it's just not right. You try lah. <laughs> and the worst part, during my time, there was this disco called Fire. Yeah, before? Or maybe not time. You're too young. <laughs> There's this disco called Fire, and still every every weekend people get, go there because it's fire, right? So the place, play environment, and plays a role, right? So where are these friends? Oh, start, I don't see them. Eh? Can I actually know them through pample.com or what? Ah, if you want to be close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, like if you're sincerely asking for His help, He will be able to help you. I've known friends where I've known them for maybe two years. But these are the people who actually make it close to Allah. They are those who, whom I've known since young, but they don't help me to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I just keep my distance. So you ask yourself, that who do I need to keep distance and who do I need to be close? They are those who call you, Hey, Saturday Zara coming with a new, a new product. Come, let's go down and check out. Ah, chalat. I want to go maulid. <laughs> it's the opposite. Very difficult. Very difficult. Right. Hey, come. Let's go outside. Watch it. What is it happening? What happening? Difficult. <laughs> Very difficult. Correct? Uh, same goes when later in future, you're going to meet a lot of colleagues. They will ask you out. In fact, if you've been through NS, there's a lot of things, right? <laughs> they ask me, I mean, come, let's go gelang. So, gelang or what? Durians. I say, I don't eat durians. No, there's another durian. Tastes nicer. Say, I don't take that durian. Uh, so you mix with a lot of people, but you must have that stand. You must have that stand and choose. Because Imam Ghazali radiallahu anh, says that these are the friends that keep you close to Allah, that you must always hold upon to them. Right? For example, if you mix with Ustad, you already got start. You already have a start. Right? But if you're not, right? So there's a difficulty come. Right? So, for example, if you know someone, if you have any questions, you can always ask them because you're close to the, you're close to start. Now, if you're not close to any one of them, then how do you ask or you have any queries? Right? You see, this letter reached to me, these letters. <laughs> right? So that now I can answer to you. Right? So, choose your friends. It will help you. Right? Choose your friends where actually it can be, it can help you to go for your mauli, go for your Quran class, go to for all those lectures and all that. These are people are able to, to help you out. Right? You need to choose your friends. Right? Secondly, you want to find enlightenment. Enlightenment. Uh, enlightenment is in istiqamah. That's why there was this saying, istiqamah khairu min alfi karamah. That means it's those who keep doing it <coughs> continuously. It is better for those who have thousand karam. Uh, thousand miracles. Because today, to start fasting, for example. If you fast today, Alhamdulillah. But it's only one day. To continue fast for the next Mondays and the next month's Mondays, that will be the struggle. But if you're able to do it, right, for a certain amount of period of time, right, then you're unshakable. That means what? You already, already feel the sweetness of performing that ibadah. Uh, right? Remember the first time you wake up for sahur? Remember years back? Ooh, ooh. It was so difficult. You know, when you throw firecrackers at us, only we will wake up. Right? <laughs> it was that difficult to wake up for your sahur. But throughout the years, you found out that if you don't eat now, I'll be hungry. Lah. Hungry like hell. You know, during after Zohar, I will be like, Right, so now at least you eat something because you understand the purpose of sahur. Back then you eat at 12 and then you just wake up at 8 and so forth. Right, so now you know purpose. So in istiqamah, continuously performing the act, you get the barakah of the act. Right, you get the barakah of the act. And that's where you say enlightenment. Imam Shafi radiallahu an, he performed subuh with the wudu of Isha for over 33 years. That means he performed subuh 
with the wudu of Isha. That means he doesn't break his wudu. Uh, ours are uh, just now only want to come out already now. Uh, now already glug, 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 glug. and it's only nine o'clock. Supo is five thirty. Five thirty. Right, right. Uh, later, later. And then you want to need the strong motivations and the love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Always keep reciting about books of him. Once Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, his wife, maybe it was her birthday or so forth. So he asked, Ya Rasulullah, can you pray for me? Make a supplication for me? He said, of course I will do. I'm your husband. He said, please pray for me that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives my sins. So Rasulullah raised his hand and said, Oh Allah, please forgive Aisha's sins, the before previous sins and also the one in the, in the future sins. Right? So Aisha was very happy because it was a very big Supplication, right? Uh, but then Rasulullah was smiling. And then Aisha asked, Ya Rasulullah, why are you smiling? He said, This is the dua that I make for my community every day. Now I ask you, uh, you know, when you go Umrah, I said, Hey, I'm going Umrah next week, uh, please pray for me, inshallah, inshallah. Do you think you pray? <laughs> the inshallah, I don't know, no. It's always inshallah, one. You know, inshallah, like Arab school, like that, in Arab. Inshallah means not coming. <laughs> You say, uh, tomorrow we meet 4 o'clock, okay? You say, inshallah, that means it's not coming. Even the non-Muslim understand it. When you say, inshallah, it's not coming. That's how the Arab works. Not Arab here, Arab there. Right? But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has not met us. He has not met us. He doesn't even know of our, uh, of our appearance, so-called. But he prayed for us. Every one of us, he made that prayer. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins. Our previous sins and our future sins. You tell us or you tell me who actually make that supplication for us every day. Every day. Anyone? Maybe our parents. But when they die, they pass away. Now continuously, Allah Rasulullah is in Barzakh. In the afterworld, he's still making the dua. And later in the hereafter, Rasulullah be waiting at Sirat, the crossroad. You know, this one is this song, See you at the crossroad. See you at the crossroad. Because at the crossroad there, Rasulullah be waiting for us. A comes about. And then the angels weigh his amal and deeds. See Rasulullah, this guy failed. Passport expired already. Cannot enter Joe. <laughs> so they say cannot pass. Uh, less than six months. Cannot go. Then Rasulullah, please, please let him go. Okay. So Rasulullah, first of all, he did, he put his sarban. Is this enough? See, Rasulullah is enough. Uh, he shared his deeds to us to ensure that every one of us, of his community, will enter paradise. That was how Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam is. So there's this saying, of course, they say if you tak kenal tak cinta. The third letter is it? So you need to read about him. You read about his miracles. You read about his sacrifice. That will actually increase the love for for him, right? You will increase the love for him. And also, <coughs> if you want to find motivations. Right, motivations in your ibadah, in your worship. You felt that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is just way too high for you. I mean, he's uh, he's one level too far for you. Right, Rasulullah when he wakes up, he perform tahajud, he stands hundred ayat, hundred ayat, and then he ruku for that long period of time for hundred ayat. I'm not able to do that. No, I have a lot of guesses here. So usually, if I stand, cool ikhlas that limitation. <laughs> cool ikhlas, kuliah ikhlas. Not that long, right? So how? How do you get that motivation? You read the scholars. Who, for example? Imam Abdullah ibn Alwi al-Haddad. Imam Haddad performed duha 100 rakat. Lapan pun tak buat, apa lagi seratus. So you read, you, you read into the managib, you read into the motivations, and you see, how did this guy actually can do that? Of course, the latest one is Abib Noam bin Muhammad al Abib Noam bin Muhammad al was a famous scholar. He was also a very strong worshipper. How much is worship? The place where he's now buried is a place where he do khalwat every night. That he will stay there all the way to Subo. 
ibadah in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we can do it every day. If you can do it every day, at least you do it once a week. Correct? If you can do it every day, you do it once a week. If you can do it once a week, you do once a month. Correct? If you can do once a month, you do once in six months. Right? If you can if you can do it once for six months, then you do once a year. If you can do once a year, then when do you do? I think forget it really. <laughs> My level is finished. <laughs> right. So if you can do it every day, you try. Strive to do once a week. For example, Saturday, no class. Got class Saturday? No class. Right. See, some people say, Ustaz, I very difficult to form duha. Why? Because at the time I'll be in class. I leave house at 6. So how is it possible for me to pray? So, yeah, it's a good excuse. Hmm, it's a good one. See? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. You just got me there, you know. I can't, you know, retaliate so-called. Right? So, how about Saturdays and Sundays when you're on a free day? And that's where you, you strive. Because if you can't do it on the days, you strive. Right? Same goes when we were in NS. It's very difficult for us to pray a certain period of time. Right? But when you have that time, you must make sure that you... You pray. Eh? You got to pray so that you get ORD as fast as possible. <laughs> right? So that you can chow king and then you can downgrade. Right? For example, for me, C9L3. There's a good class. <laughs> 9 to 5 every day, brother. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> and for that, I get to pray Friday <laughs> prayers every week. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So that helps you get the motivation. Right? And these books are available in all languages. Alhamdulillah, now you have e-books. Right? What's the thing? Scribe, is it? Is it Scribe? Huh? There's this one, online book, e-books, where you can actually read for free. Have you read it? And they have very good books there in English as well in, in Malay itself. I think I already deleted it. Uh, yeah, delete already. Okay, next letter. Dear Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's a saying that goes, tak kenal, maka tak cinta. Mm. I claim that I love you and yet, I, there's so many things about you that I have yet to learn and discover. Or even translate this knowledge into action. Let this letter be a reminder to instill the drive in seeking opportunities to know more about my beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have faced and I and am truly facing emotional hardship. Truly, only he knows these inner struggles. But this is nothing as compared to all the trials you have been through. And I pray that Allah grants me the strength and guidance that I need to overcome this hurdle, inshallah. Faith in my dua. Okay, so basically, tak kena, tak cinta, already answered, right? Read more about his biography and so forth. Now, if you ever, 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 ever in a very hardship that you find that, you know, what you have achieved and what you did so far has just no way out. Okay, there are a few ways in which I will recommend that you can also perform and you can recite and you can do ama so that there's a way out. Before that, I will start with a story. This, there's this guy, I think it was mentioned in YouTube before and also in Sheikh Muhammad Yaqubi. You know how did Busairi came about? Did you know? Did you know? Imam Busairi Sharafuddin, he was a famous scholar and then he keep writing poems and then he praised people, praised the governor. That's how they get paid at that point of time. Right then after that he was uh, he faced illness sickness he went to Mount E he went N U H there was an cure right so what was the cure there was no cure so he asked from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala so he actually came up with himself of a way to actually since I've been praising all these governors and so forth for money now I would like to praise Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he completed. The, the 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 poems burga and then he met, he dreamt of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that rasulullah gave him a cure he was at that point paralyzed is there a cure for paralyzed 
when you paralyze yourself, can you get a cure? I felt, I think in the modern times, or uh, even now, they, there's no cure for that, correct? But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa came about and gave a cure. That means the way out to the problem is the way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is one. Secondly, this, this thing, incident happened in Lebanon, Beirut. Right, during the time of, uh, not during the time Prophet, but during, I think about maybe 50, 60 years back, right, uh, where there's a celebration of Maulid Rasul. Back then, during the 50s and 60s, in Singapore too, we have that celebrations. Right, in Malaysia, they have the walk. Right, during the Maulid, they have the walk. They, the whole very big banners, then they walk. Back then in Singapore, they walk too. But now, they just jaywalk. <laughs> so, uh, as you know, those villages, when times of happiness, they have these rifles, right? They shoot in the air to show their happiness. Pam, 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 right? So it happens that this guy accidentally went, pam, pop his shotgun, right? It hit someone. It hit a Jew lady who was at the corridor looking at them. No, like, <clears throat> you know, someone always looking to look into the, the parade, right? She got hit. Wow. And then she fell, right? So she was in hospital, and then she was in hospital. She found that they don't have the technology back then in Beirut to actually uh, operate on her. That means she needs to go to America, where they have the latest technology to actually operate on her. So she was she got hit nearly near to the heart, right? So she left for America, where it was sponsored by the the hospitals. What did the mother say? Say this Prophet Muhammad is troublesome. Because of celebrating him, my daughter got into this problem. Alright? Because they are celebrating, because of them celebrating you, my daughter got hit. If not for that celebration, my daughter might not be hit. Alright? So she was cursing Prophet Muhammad all the time. Uh, she was cursing back then. So while, while, was in, while I was in America, in the ICU unit, there was one night. Where the, the mom wasn't there, maybe the mom was out for, for a coffee for, a, for rest. That this lady was woken up by someone in a jubba. Very whitish in appearance, a very strong light. And confirmed it's not Ustaz Amin. <laughs> so this person came close to him and placed his noble hand over the place that he was supposed to be operated. Right? And then the, the Arab girl was us, Man Anta. That means, who are you? Man Anta. Say, Anna Muhammad. Hmm. He was quite humble. He said, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, I'm Muhammad. So he placed his hand where he was supposed to be operated. He left the hand and then he just left the house. Uh, So-called leave the, the room. There was strong scent of smell, good smell. You see, any place where actually he, he is there, there's a real strong smell. And then the parent, the, the, the mother came back and she said, what happened? He said, I'm cured. She just took out all the, 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 the zzz, zzz, what do you call that? The zzz, check the, the heart, check the thing, the BP and all that. She just took it away and said, Alhamdulillah, I feel good now. The doctors came. She said, what happened? So she said, there's this guy. In the juba, fearing light, and it's not Ustad Amin. Mm-hmm. He put his hand over the, my chest, and that's I'm caught. And introduced himself as Muhammad. And I believe in my heart that that's Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. And I'm caught. She became a Muslim. The parents became a Muslim. The doctors attending to her became a Muslim. The nurses became Muslim. But the whole hospital didn't become a Muslim. <laughs> Rasulullah has his own ways. So when we are in difficulty, there are certain things that we can do. Firstly, right, is to perform two rakat of hajat. Two rakat of hajat and is to be performed after midnight. Why after midnight? Because after midnight, got a lot of steam. Ah, they me shock like that. Ah. Because most of the time, during the day, if you were praying, you're making supplication, you always listen to 
the cars, right not? You listen to the motorcycle, you see baby crying, right? But at night, do you, do you hear all these voices? You only hear one voices, a sheep moving. When a sheep want to move, what, what sound you make? Ah, that one, that one. Kol kola kubro, they call it. Kul aung zubri falakko. So only that sound is okay, it's okay. That sound is okay, okay. You can take it. Kol kola kubro, they call it. So that point of time, where you feel the, you feel the serenity, you take wudu, pray to rakat of ajat. To rakat of ajat, you want to recite your favorite surah, please go ahead. But it's recommended to recite Alam Nashrah Laka Sadrak. Alam Nashrah Laka Sadrak, what does it mean? Now, if you go into your apps, the Quran that you have, Alam Nashrah Laka Sadrak, Allah says that certain burden is in your chest. Remember the last paper? After the last paper, how do you feel? The last paper? Ooh! Ooh! <laughs> I felt that after ORD. Oh, ORD? ORD, oh! Oh, I tell you, go see out already. Can go see out, correct? The relief. Oh, the relief. The relief. After the last semester, after the third year, fourth year, after getting the result, a relief. So all that burden is kept where? In your chest. Alam nashrah laka sadrat. Oh Allah, take it away. This burden from my? From my chest. Alam nashrah laka sadrat. And then second rakaat, to recite our favorite surah. Inna a'tayna kal kautar. Right? So two rakaat. Alam nashrah. And then after once you finish that two rakaat, you do a lot of istighfar. Minimum 17 times. Astaghfirullah al-Azim, Astaghfirullah al-Azim, Astaghfirullah. Why? Because all the sins that we do, right, it becomes a hindrance to him. Our sins, not to him. He has always been close to us. He was as close as the vein in your neck. It was that close. But because we commit a lot of sins, big sins, small sins, sin, sin, unseen sins, right, it becomes a hindrance to him. It becomes a hindrance to him. But that's what of our expectation. That's why I say that no matter what, how big your how big you sin, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always waiting for you to return to him. That's why we say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Which means that that's not when someone died. We always say that when someone died. But everything in our life is for that purpose, for Lillah Ta'ala. Marriage is for Lillah Ta'ala. You work for Lillah Ta'ala. And you study here also for Lillah Ta'ala. You want to provide for your family. You want to have a good job so that you can contribute to the society. It's always for Lillah Ta'ala. Wa inna ilayhi raji'un That you did something wrong, something good, always go back to him. This morning, wake up subuh 7.30. Go back to him. Oh, ya Allah, Ya Rasul, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, 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 forgive me, forgive me. Tomorrow, 8.30. More words. Allah, 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 Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Saturday, since Friday night, right? Go lipat, lipat. Wake up, 9.45. Allah, 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 Astaghfirullah, 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 Astaghfirullah. Allah doesn't look at your sins. Because Allah said, In Allah, you will tawabin, wa you will mutatahin. Allah know that we are weak. Allah know that we sins. That's why the door of tawbah is always open for us. I give an example. A non-Muslim, Right? Uh, perform fornication 99 times. Fornication 99 times. All of them pregnant. 99? 99 pregnant. Then kill 99 people. 99 people he killed. Then he became Muslim. What happened to the past sins? What happened to the past sins? Huh? Matilika said forgiven. Forgiven. Now I ask you, how big sin have you committed? You kill anyone? I think mosquito, okay? <laughs> I guess you kill rats, mosquito, but you have not killed anybody. So how big sins have you done? Maybe wake up subuh, 9.45, that one common. Right? Maybe you miss your asa prayer. Don't always make that sin as a hindrance to Allah. Always go back to Him. Oh Allah, I'm weak. I'm weak, Ya Allah. I want a Ferrari, but I'm lazy. <laughs> so just tell Him that maybe He throw the Ferrari at your head. I'm lazy to work, but I want money. Then you tell him that I gave you a lazy job. 
There's always to To complain to him Complain to him Because he said Oh the only astajib Langkum Always ask from me That I'm the one who fulfill it I'm the one who fulfill it So every one of us is different Some are strong Some are weak So We always go back to him Right So after istifra Istifar to To clear our Hindrance Barriers to him Right Ah Then then you recite salutations to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this sirah. As-salatu wa salam alayka ya sayidi ya rasulullah khud bi yadi ka lati lati adrikti. Salutations and salam to you ya rasulullah that I complain to you that my efforts are wasteless. My efforts are no more beneficial. So I only complain to you so that you can help me out. That's what he meant in the salutations. And that's how Imam Boshari was uh, cured. That was how Aulia and Ulama get cured or solved from their problems in their life. It's called Salawat Adrikia. A-D-D-R-I-K-I-Y-A-H. As-salatu wassalam alayka ya sayidi ya rasulullah Khud biyadi Khud biyadi means what? Ya rasulullah please hold my hand I don't know where to go Guide me I'm lost, bankrupt Help me out Khud biyadi, hold my hand Hilati adrikni That means that I my efforts are wasted So I don't know any way out Please help me out Beside how many times? Minimum 313 3-1 Oh, the, one, the, the number very good, huh? 313. Huh? Sunday can queue. 313 is the number of messengers. Right? Rasulullah, there are 313. Minimum 313. If you want to do 1000, better. Do first day, second day, third day. Within a week, all your problems will be solved. But constantly do, doing it. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith, and that man salla alayya kharajo minal ghumum Those who make salutations to me first If he's bored If he's bored I take him out from his boredom Ham Ham problem Ram Stress By making the salutations to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam You will be safe from stress You will be stress You will be safe from problems it will be safe from boredom. boredom. Boredom is a problem. Right? You feel bored. Right? At one time in life, you will feel bored. When? At the age of 40. The Western people call it midlife crisis. In Islam, that's where we matured. Because in Ali Karam Allah Wajah says, from 0 to 2, we call it baby. Right? Not? Uh, infant. Right? 2 to Balik, the age of puberty, between 2 or 9 to 15, that is child. No, if you have a child later, you're going to pay the ticket different price, you know. 0 to 2, infant, 10%. From 2 to 12 is 75%. And then from the age of puberty till 40, shabab. That means what? The youth. Last time during our time, they called teenagers. There's a magazine called Teenager, you know. So teenagers between what age to what age? 12 to? 12 to 21. So you are still teenager lah. <laughs> Musa. Eh? Teenager. Right? And then Sayyidina Ali say, Al-Shabaq warathatul junun. And this one. Sayyidina Ali Karamallah just says, Between 15 to 40, they are crazy. These people at this age, 15 to 40, crazy people. They include us. Right? We are crazy people. Why? We tend to do funny, funny things. Ah, so we mature at the age of 40. That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa became a Rasul at the age of 40. Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, he was saved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the age of 40. They say a lot of prophets actually became prophet after the age of 40. That's where the maturity starts. Why? You're mostly married, you have children, and then that's where maturity starts. At the age of 40. Then you start to plan for your future. Now, this one. When to marry? Who? <laughs> you don't know, right? Yeah. But the age or age of 40, you start to 
mature. So now it's okay to do crazy things. Huh? But they don't give you the license to do crazy things. Right? So that's why when you actually make an appointment, huh? inshallah, Saturday at 4 we meet, they come 5.30. Right? Uh, standard one. I'm coming, I'm in the bus, but still in the shower. Uh, right? In the shower. Uh, they come, okay, I meet you at 9. 9. They come you, 9. In Jakarta time, 1 hour by bus. <laughs> if they follow India time, 2 and a half hour. See, your time, huh? I think you follow it, Mumba time. Right? So I think we... <coughs> So, 313 or, or 1,000 times. That's the first one. Second one is, Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Also, 313 to 1,000. Right? So, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease your burden, reduce your hardships. Right? So, same goes when you actually try to revise for your exams. So while revising, try to re recite salutations of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Is mujarab. Mujarab means what? It's been tried, tested, and proven. Tried, tested, and proven. Right? Tried, tested, and pro proven. It's in the book of Abdullah Salawat. Right? Uh, a kitab by Imam Yusuf bin Sumayn Nabahan. Radiyallahu anh. He's a big wali. Right? So he actually <coughs> take out these salutations of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And that many awliya, many saints, many ulama tried it, tested it, and it was proven. So inshallah, may this help you out in your life, in your future, when you are actually facing any difficulties in hardship, inshallah. So with that, I close the... This video is brought to you by Guide to Goodness. Click on the left to watch the previous episode. Click on the right to watch the next episode. And don't forget to like... Share, comment, and subscribe. Assalamu alaikum.